This is Blade Method Mindset, episode 11, with Corey Allen and me, Chris Trainer. Hello, Corey. Hello, Chris. Episode 11 doesn't sound nearly as cool as episode 10. I know. Now, now it's we, like, now we, well, oh, we have nine more episodes until we're till episode 20. Yeah, but then, I think we're like thinking 50. Yeah, that's true. That's where my mind's going. 50. Yeah, 50 episodes will be our next milestone. And then we're getting the poppers, the little... <laughs> Confetti poppers. Claire would be so mad. <laughs> yeah, just sit, well, Halo might jump over that fence. And yeah, that's true. If she heard those you. things. Yeah. yeah. We'd be in here fighting off Halo. Well, I was really excited about the feedback we got from that pregnancy episode. Um, a lot of good feedback. So yeah, thank you guys good. for coming up and stopping us and letting us know. I got a lot of messages. Um, it was beneficial. So I'm glad the two knuckleheads were able to talk to you about your pregnancies. We yeah, appreciate and, that. And, and, and our experience. Chris is here with us now, at, which means that he was not murdered for the dogs eating Claire's sandal thing. Yeah. Well, I've been in this game a long time, Corey. So I knew exactly how to handle that situation. Claire walked in the door and I said, babe, have you seen my story? And she said, what? I was like, oh, no. Oh. You got to watch. <laughs> like you were going to really post some like, like life of it. Like, like, oh, yeah. Like something <laughs> bad happened, you know. And she's like, like what? Just tell me. And I'm like, just, just watch. Me. Okay. And so I grabbed her sandal. I was like, the dogs ripped your sandal. And she was like <laughs> relieved that something ba- like the gym wasn't on fire or something. You know, she was kind of, I kind of built it up so that something catastrophic happened. And then she realized it was just a chewed up sandal. Mm-hmm. Not the end of the world. It Still was her upset. favorite sandal, right? Yeah, and she's already gotten new ones, so. Well, that's good. Yeah. And the pups are still alive because it's not their fault. As I asked Claire, I was like, Claire, were you mad at the dogs? Well, it's not the dog's fault. So wow. I, obviously I was like, are you mad at Chris? She's like, well, it wasn't Chris's fault either. If he would have left the door <laughs> open and the dogs would have made it, then it would have been his fault. But yeah. they were on the table, and that's where we leave them. And the dogs are just, I, what she said something, like, they're just in a weird spot right now, so they're eating things. Yeah, <laughs> they are in a weird spot. Everyone keeps messaging me. It's because she's pregnant, so it's her fault. All right, um, well, yeah, <laughs> let's fault. move on. Moving on from the dogs. You have a, uh, a smorgasbord of stuff over here, Chris. What, on the table? Yeah, you got a bunch of containers of things. And well, a and a drinking glass with a spoon in it. <laughs> Water. Water. Yeah. Is that what's in there? Well, if you're if they're not watching on YouTube, it would be hard to Well, there's this, so if you're not on YouTube, if you haven't seen it yet, Chris has uh, some supplements over here, some powdered things. I got my morning routine supplements, which is now taking place at actually here in about seven minutes. I gotta break my fast. Fast. So we're getting yeah. into Chris's <laughs> not- no. Not f- fasting like I was not several episodes ago, but a trying dire fast and starting intermittent fasting. So you are starting intermittent fasting. When did you yeah. start, or when did you decide to start? Officially on Friday. Last Friday. This is Thursday, so nearly a week. Oh, so you've done. And so how does it? I don't even. How does it work? So I. This is just something that. So I want to get into and preface it like over my. 13 year fitness career, I've done a lot of different things from carb Nutrition cycling, wise, stuff like that, yeah. you know, when I was bodybuilding and, um, I mean, paleo and I've done so many different things. Macro so this counting. isn't something that I'm doing, you know, this is an experiment for myself because I've done a lot of research on it. Lots, a lot of people way smarter than me that know way more about intermittent fasting than I do and doctors and people that are, um, well versed in experience in, in the studies of what intermittent fasting can do for the body. And the most intriguing thing for me in researching all this was that people that intermittent fast build more muscle and gain better cardiopulmonary endurance. Obviously body composition is intriguing as well. Um, and then the digestive health aspect of giving your body a break. Um, Because whereas I'm accustomed to eating until 8 o'clock at night and then waking up and eating again at 4 a.m., my digestive system and liver is constantly working. And I never, ever thought about it like that until I'd done all this research that, you know, my body is constantly working and trying to get all of this nutrition process that I'd never give it a break. And so that was really intriguing to me. And so um, I dug a little bit deeper and just 
uh, mainly listen to podcasts and, and watch videos on YouTube with these people and, and what it is. So I'm just giving it a go. And what that means is I'm doing a 16 hour fast, eight hour eating window. So, um, my last meal last night was, I went to, so like Wednesday night, I'm at the gym a little later and I dipped out a little early cause I wanted to eat. Yeah. I, I didn't want to eat so late cause I knew I was going to push my window further today. Oh, so it's just constant window. So yeah. You- Eat last, you get a 16-hour 16 16 hour windows that you do not eat. Ideally. Right. You know, okay. there's people that will do a 12-hour fast at a minimum, 16 hours, 16 and 8. The consensus from multiple different studies and individuals is the best, 16, 8. 16-hour 16 fast, 8-hour eating window. Um, so my eating window today will be from 1230 to 830 tonight, um, which I probably won't eat till 830, but that'll be my today's window. And then I'll stop eating earlier today so that I can eat earlier tomorrow. tomorrow. So I'll have like a six hour window today. And, um, and just to be clear though, this is not for you to lose weight for your weightlifting meat or anything no. like that. This is a lifestyle decision to try, uh, just to, to figure out, to see, see if what, it makes me better. Yeah. See how it I'm in constant search of making myself better. And this is something that I've found a lot of proof from other people that have done it that can contribute to gains that I'm looking for in muscle because I'm getting older, um, in cardiopulmonary endurance because I just want to be fitter and being healthier, reducing inflammation in the body by giving my body a break. So those are all things that in theory will make me better if I do this, so right. that, so th- this, uh, this isn't something like I'm introducing and talking. I think it's even a little early to talk about it right now because I'm giving it a full month to six weeks. We'll see how the holidays go um, with this, you know, with meals and family and yeah, breakfast and, and stuff like that. Um, but a lot of it is uh, figuring out break, how to break my habits because I've built up all of these strong habits over the years that I'm not. I, I want to do like it's a habit like waking oh, up and having the shake that I'm shake. about to shake or have that's normal for me um and I'm hungry at that time and I want to do it or eating my pre-workout food and then my post-workout food and figuring out how to train like these are all things that I'm having to overcome now and figure out and how to do with. can you have your like spark rehydrate in the morning is that okay that breaks no? a fast that does break the fast oh so yeah. it's nothing at all nothing not even my branch chain amino acids which I've had every morning first thing in the morning for four years um and that's be- specifically because of the leucine uh, a branch chain amino acid leucine has a uh, effect on your uh, pancreas releasing uh, insulin spike as studies have shown so that's like a huge thing in the intermittent fasting world is okay I'll fast but I'm taking my branch chain amino acids because we know that taking branch chain amino acids will stave off your body's wa- want and need to burn muscle tissue for fuel um, and so Unfortunately, branch chain amino acids in several studies have shown to break a fast. So I'm having my branch chain amino acids now with food during the day, twice a day, Mm. which who knows how that's going to work. I don't know if I'm going to see the benefits or the, or, um, you know, I don't, whatever, what's, what's this benefits this, uh, benefits or the or negativity, <laughs> neg- neg- negative effects, negative effects um, that's probably yeah, what it's supposed of, to be. of not having my amino acids when I'm used to having them. So breaking up all these habits and that's something that like for our sp- specific community and the people that are listening to this podcast is to know is that this is something I'm doing because I've been, I'm well in control of what I do with my fitness and my body. And I don't, need to develop better habits because I've spent my adult life building these habits. It didn't happen overnight. It's taken years and years and years, but I I can comfortably go into this and be a hundred percent committed and not have to worry about wavering. Like I haven't done broken it at all or stepped one iota out of line since I started and I don't plan on doing that. And again, we'll see how the holidays goes. I don't want to be a a Debbie Downer around my family and be yeah, like, oh, exactly. no, I'm not going out to breakfast or, because I, um, yeah. you know, my mom, one of my favorite things about going home to my mom's house is like smelling bacon in the morning. You know, she cooks the most amazing bacon from this uh, co-op that she gets it from in my hometown. And it's just like something I really look forward to. So I don't want to be like, hey, I'll have, have that at noon. Yeah. You know, so and she brings you a sandwich when she picks you up from the airport. Yep. So you're going to have to make sure that your flights after noon. <laughs> it is. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You want your sandwich? No, mom. 
the sandwich you've been making me for the past yeah. 33 years, I don't want now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, do you well, go ham in the middle of the day? In like that eight hours, do you just eat everything in sight? It's hard. Yeah. It's hard to eat in that window. So, um, you know, I, I definitely feel like I'm not getting in the calories that I've gotten. So, like, Monday... Monday, I did the workout in the afternoon after I broke my fast with food in my system, and I didn't feel very good. I felt like I was too full and didn't feel great. So Tuesday, I did the workout in my fasted state. I had no energy, didn't yeah, feel good. Didn't feel good you know, so yesterday, I ate a little early, broke my fast at like 10.45 when we were doing pictures for the coaches. Mm -hmm. And then we trained right after, and I had my normal right before, just routine, small protein yeah. and, and some sugar and some fig bar, um, and, and felt great during that workout, yeah. you know? And so um, trying to figure that out, you know, how I'm going to go with that. But speaking of that, I do have to break my fast right now. Yeah, you can work um, on that. And the reason that, like, is a, something that we talk about, like, we've been training so often and long that like it, we have a routine down like I know when I eat before workout windows to feel good so like when you have to change that after you've been doing it the same way for so long it's probably difficult right like it's a big deal to eat or to work out on an empty stomach when you never do or to work out when you're full when you never do that well people like, are constantly trying to figure out what works best for spot, them and yeah. we've had all these episodes about figuring out what works best for you and so like People are like, well, you just had all these episodes on what you do, and now you're doing this. It's like, yeah, well, I'm gonna try um, to find something else. That I'm gonna, yeah, I'm gonna try something that works the best. You know, I'm in constant search of that. So if this doesn't work the best, then I'm gonna go back to what has worked for me. I've been pretty darn happy and effective at what I have been doing. Right. And the foods that I'm eating, and the way that I eat them, and the supplements that I take, isn't changing dramatically. It's just the window and when I'm when taking them, them is changing. So, um, a benefit to people that are like super busy on the go is like knowing that they don't have to eat right. all the time. I guess that makes sense. Um, <laughs> that they can go prolonged periods of time without having to, to eat. To get food in. Yeah. So. Cause I, yeah, I know that's a lot. Like that's pretty, isn't it? Yeah. That's nice. What you got? What I always try to make there? it a tri-layer cake. <laughs> <laughs> like, uh, to make it look really good. Just some greens, some avo greens, some avo red. So greens is just like a potent punch of all these vegetables. Um, they're super bioavailable, really good for like your gut microbiota and stuff like that. And then greens, which is, uh, or uh, reds, which is like the cytochemicals and the um, resveratrols and the beets and stuff like that that are really good for cardiopulmonary health. And, and you, never, then, you don't shake your bottle that? You, just, you stir always it. just stir it with a spoon? Stir it. Doesn't it get chunky on you? No. Huh. I, this is probably really annoying on the podcast. Yeah, Chris is built. The one thing I've noticed through the Two years scoops of training of vanilla with, protein. with Chris is he doesn't ever keep the little metal ball in his shaker bottles. No, They're never annoying. there. <laughs> I can't stand it. Listen to it rattle around, around in my bag. <laughs> yeah. I'm all, I remember when we first started training, you like made a shake, and I was like, dude, you don't have, like, how do you shake that up? You don't have a, you don't have a little ball in there? And people that are going to watch this on YouTube is gonna, are going to realize how you make shakes and how you take them down. You know what I'm go. saying? Yeah. Watch. Good. Here's None of this sipping aspect stuff. So I got to break my fast right now. So hold on. Five, four, three, two, one, time, plus one, six seconds. Yeah, six and a half seconds. Yeah. That's pretty good. Smashed it. <laughs> oh, now you feel better? Oh, man. So I broke my fast with proteins and carbs. Was it and as bad as your? It's not as bad though as your like your fast you're doing for your weightlifting cut though, huh? No, no. Not well, really. that was because that was no food yeah. for twenty four hours. Yeah, well, that's yeah. good. At least we don't. Yeah, not that you weren't. You know, sixteen hours in one minute. Look at that. Stop fasting. Oh yeah, a little app. Yep. That's fancy. What's the name of the app? Well, maybe we'll plug them, dude. You got zero. Your zero. Zero is the name. Yep. If you're listening, zero. Chris Trainer uses your app. And this is a doctor that. Is put out a lot of research on intermittent fasting. I'm just trying to get developed this dude. out. It's how, out. You know, you listen to these podcasts. They're like, oh, and this is sponsored by. Yep. That's zero. You know who this podcast is sponsored by? <laughs> Chris Trainer. The Blade Method. <laughs> the Blade Method. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. And it's gonna continue to be so. <laughs> uh, well, good. I'm glad you're off your fast. 
Well, now you get to continue to eat for the next seven hours and 57 minutes. Yeah, I'm going to cut it a little early because I got to get to bed early. I got an early flight. I was gonna, oh, I was gonna, that was, I was actually going to ask you. Yeah, so what, you'll, can you, is it, are you supposed to end on the same time every day or if you need to move it, that's okay, like based off your schedule? Like obviously you have to wake up earlier, you have to get on a flight, you have to do all that stuff tomorrow. So like fasting and cutting it a little short so that you can eat earlier in the day is okay or is it... No, they, so I, so... Um, I could actually eat till eight o'clock cause, but so you, again, it's 16 hours you want to fast for. Okay. So if I stop eating earlier tonight, then I, my fasting your- window, I can fast for 16 hours and eat earlier tomorrow. Right. But I land in Milwaukee around noon Milwaukee time, which will be one o'clock here. So my flight's at eight Oh five in the morning. I'll be able to get picked up from the airport, and then Joe and I can go eat. Well, he can't eat. He's cutting. Ooh, how, wait. So Chris is going to the AO for one of the Blade American Methods, Open. Yeah, one of the Blade Method lifters, Joe Trivers of Tripoli. Troya. Troya. Ta- uh, is that a P? The in Italian there? stallion. Huh? There's not a P in his last. No, T R O I. Uh, for some reason, I thought it was like Tripoli. He listens to this podcast. I know he does. So. Sorry, I messed your name up, Joe. Um, he's lifting AO tomorrow. Yeah. Yeah. Or on is it Saturday, Saturday or Sunday? Sweet. He has 96 cut. kilos, so... What's he at right now? He texted me this morning at 97.2. Okay. Yeah, so... Is that not, a hard not cut bad. for him this year? So he gets about a liter and a half of water today. Um, 97.4. If he's if he would have been any more than that, I would just send him a little piglet emoji. Never <laughs> <laughs> makes him feel very yeah. good. Um, so yeah, so Joe is, uh, I met Joe through Advocare and, uh, several years back and, um, we just became friends and I started coaching him a couple years ago and, and weightlifting and, or I don't know how long ago, but, um, and so the American open was just a far off dream for him, but he actually qualified this year and by a kilo. And so we're going, it's his first national meet and he was, kept asking me if Claire was going to go because Claire goes to the American Open every year. We have yeah. in the past, and this is the first year she's not in a long time because of obviously she's pregnant. Yeah. And so he kept, and we knew she was pregnant, but no one else knew. So he kept being like, is Claire going? You yeah. know, where, are you coming? Are you coming? Because he kept wanting me to come because it's his first national meet. And yeah. So I couldn't be like, yeah. So I kept saying, like, I don't know. I don't know. And so finally he, like, bought my flight and, you He's know, like, arranged my hotel and, and kind of, got me there and I was going to go anyways, but, um, he, nice it was nice of him to do that. So yeah, we're really looking forward to that Saturday night. I'll post, uh, some stuff about him. This is people will listen to this podcast after he already lifts on Saturday. So, um, yeah. that should be fun. Headed back to the AO, but it's in Milwaukee and it's 17 degrees in Milwaukee right now. That so it's going to be freezing. And yeah. with that, I did want to ask you about this and it may be a little bit off of our topic, but because you coach a lot of weightlifters, weightlifting, and cutting weight is a part of it. Would you say because female lifters though you haven't really besides Claire like you haven't have you had any like hard cuts for female weightlifters like is that a harder I would assume that's a harder conversation to have with a female lifter than it is with the male lifter. Not right? if they're serious. Really, it's basically not if they want to lift. You really, know, like it's, it's a sport. You know, if and um and I don't have. You know, Claire kind of takes the our all our new females on mm-hmm. under her wing. Like uh, uh, Amy had to do a weight cut for her last meet, and she had to cut pretty drastically, and she didn't respond to it super well in the meet. Like her body um, just didn't feel very strong, but she knew she had to make a weight class, and that's something she had to do. And generally, the females lift right around their weight, weight class, class, you know, that. and it's not a big deal. Just like Claire always has. I have another lifter in Wisconsin who trains with Joe Lisa, and she's right on her weight all the time. We're not until she gets loads that we could maybe qualify for something. That's the thing is you only need to cut weight is if you're going to qualify. qualify. Yeah. You know, otherwise you should lift healthy and at your weight that, you, you know, you can go there, out yeah. and feel good at. And unless you got to qualify for something, you shouldn't be cutting yeah. weight. So for the, if you don't know what that is, so weightlifting, you you lift in weight classes and then there's qualifying totals so the total between your snatch and your clean and jerk weight that you hit is different per your weight class so if you're in a lower weight class the weights become a little bit lower so if like those numbers are attainable for you then maybe you try to cut a little bit of weight so that you can hit those numbers that's why you would cut like it's not just because you want to change your weights or whatever that may be just like i cut weight for this last weight to meet to qualify for nationals because i would rather go to uh masters nationals and lift with people that aren't lifting is heavier Heavy, weights, right. even though I could lift heavier probably if I was 
heavier and not cutting weight. So it's a fine line yeah. on what makes sense for the athlete. And I guess it's true if if they are if they're an athlete and they know what they're doing, like you're not telling someone that they're fat. Like these are just the facts. Like if you yeah. want to lift it this weight class, yeah. this is what you have to weigh. Like it's not us saying you're too big. Like it's just that you and either are going to be here or or you're going to lift here, and it's you making the decision of which one you want to be in. I guess you know. And that's something that I talked about or or posted about the other day. Like if you choose to be offended by that, you're going to be offended. So like I. I have no problem asking girls what their weight is. Right. I've just chosen that I'm not going to be let that become awkward. Mm-hmm. And so I'm very direct about it. How much do you weigh? Okay, well, if you want to be here, this is what you got to do. And right. you just got to take that approach for me personally yeah. um, and leave the emotions out of it. You know, sometimes, and obviously I haven't run into that with a super emotional person about that. But again, then it's probably in the sport for you. Right. Because you know, so. it's purely based off. Wait, how much you how can much weigh? You, how much you, how can, much lift? you can lift, and, and how, how much you how weigh? Much do you weigh? <laughs> yeah. yeah. So it, it's weight is heavily involved in that sport. So yeah, yeah, cool. Well, on the same line as uh, your fasting, which is a habit. Some other habits that I mean, I guess the easiest way to put it is that it's healthy to have habits, right? Like healthy you can to have get, habits. That's pretty good. If you can get into a routine or a habit that you have that you do not break, like it's good to have that routine in your life. Yep. You know, so we're going to talk a little bit about, I guess, just a healthy habit that we've picked up throughout the years. Yeah. I know. Healthy habits that can change your life. That's that, that was better. That's what, that that's was, what we want is slogan. picking up habits that can change your life. And that's what I wanted to talk about, about this fasting is I didn't, I, I don't take this lightly. Like I've dedicated and changed my life. You know, what one of my habits was when I was uh, 19 or 20 years old, when I was just getting into realizing that I wanted to make fitness a career when I was in college and not where I wanted to be, drinking soda all the time, eating like crap, partying. One of the habits I started doing that changed my life was drinking regular soda with diet soda. And this actually happened in the dorm at 18 years old. Drinking regular with so diet. So it, it, when you go to the dorm, you can choose, you can just fill up your soda. Oh. And I, and I and was starting to learn and realize how much sugar was in soda and it was contributing to me not feeling and looking the way I wanted to feel and look. And so I started filling up half my soda with regular soda and oh, half my half soda with diet, diet soda. soda. And that changed my life. It did. And so that is one habit that I can look back on that if I wouldn't have started doing that, who knows what would have happened. But that habit changed my life, and it led into a habit of not drinking soda, soda at all. Drinking yeah. diet soda, going fully to diet soda, and then not drinking <clears throat> soda at all you know, over the years. So um, I want to encourage our listeners, as we break off and from this part of the podcast, is to look into your life, look at what you're doing, and see how much of it is habitual. And not that we want to lead boring habit, you know, habit filled lives where we don't go out of the norm. I think anyone that knows me knows that I like to live on the edge a little bit and kind of go off on my own and do things that are, are unique to me. With habits, with habits, <laughs> you know, yeah. still, uh, you know, um, I'm still gonna continue to drink water every day. You exactly. Know, like, yeah. So, like one of those things is no matter where I am, whether I'm in, um, you know, a European country or I'm back home or I'm here in Phoenix doing my daily job, that I'm gonna wake up every morning and chug water. Yeah, that's a habit that I've gotten down and ingrained in me, and it's not gonna change no matter what I'm doing, where I'm at. So that's a, another habit that has changed my life. I feel so much better throughout the day when I am proactive on my hydration. And I love people that come up to me and tell me that they're starting to chug water in the morning and they're doing that because of this podcast. So um, taking an introspective look at your life and seeing how many things are just reacted, what you're reacting to and what you're proactive about and making habitual. So some people have really bad habits that every day on the way to work, they're stopping by the Circle K and getting a sugar filled coffee and a donut. Not that I know many of those people, but that's people's daily habits. Just yeah. to bring up an example, what if their daily habit was getting out of work, bed every morning, chugging water, and having this nutrient filled awesome bomb? 
you know, that I just had to break my fast. (laughs) Then that is a habit, you know? So uh, as people listen to this podcast and they stop listening to it, I'd like them to look at their life, look at their daily life and see how many things in there are habitual that they do that are making themselves better or making themselves worse as far as health and wellness is concerned, body composition and those type of things, because that's what this podcast is about. We're not about picking up habits to learn how to fix your car engine better. We're, right. fig- we're habits on making the best version of yourself. And I think a part of that too is also obtainable habits, like not setting it like from the gates, setting a habit that is not obtainable. Yeah. Right. Like if for me, once I, I had a habit one time I was, or I was going to have a habit that I was going to go to bed every night at nine o'clock. Every man, no matter what. That seems pretty attainable to me. Well, it's me. not if you, like, but if I coach till, if I get out of the gym at 8.30, get home, eat, like, mm, yeah, I, yeah. I didn't factor in the fact that I have to drive 20 minutes. Pull over in the parking <laughs> yeah, lot and like, fall asleep. And now I have to go to sleep, right? It's like, <laughs> yeah. that's not an obtainable, but saying that I'm going to do get my a best number to of get hours a certain of sleep. hours of sleep. Or when I get home, I'm not going to turn on the TV and watch TV. Whatever time I get home, I'm going to eat, shower, and go to bed. Like, that's an obtainable habit. Not so out of that, that, what have you done? Have you created a habit from that? Even I've though- created a habit. Yeah, I, I stay off. I try to stay off my I stay off my phone when I get home. I get home, I eat, and I try to go to sleep. Because mm-hmm. that you can get stuck in that window of, like, you, that keeps you up later. So that's been the habit I've had. Cool. Well, is it changing your life? I mean, I feel better. Yeah, yeah. I used to stay up way too late. And this was, like way back when I I've, I've had a pretty regular sleep schedule since I started coaching career so the past 4 years but before that I would stay up till midnight sometimes oh, like you know what I mean goodness. like and have to wake I wouldn't wake up at 4 a.m. so that was probably another reason that I started waking up earlier but um but me thinking that there was going to be a way that I was going to be able to just go to bed at 9 o'clock, eyes were going to shut off it was going to be fine like that's not an obtainable habit but just having the plan to make it as obtainable as possible and making that the habit makes it a little bit easier to tackle, right? Like if you're trying to start a new habit, just really looking at it as what's something that's possible for me to do. It'll be challenging, but that's still obtainable for me in making that habit, you know? Yeah. I think that that's a great piece of advice, but at the same time, make it attainable, you know, don't set a boundary on it, readjust it and yeah. then attain it. So get a certain number of sleep, stay off your phone. Yeah, exactly. Those are may uh, divert away from the initial, but you didn't just throw it all away. Oh, up, oh, didn't you go know, to sleep. Make, it, make it attainable, yeah. you know, uh, design it around what, what you can do, what you know you can do and don't soften it up and, and make it so it's not something that's going to benefit you. You know, so I, I, that's what I, I really want people to kind of, uh, as we get feedback from you, kind of let us know what you think your habits are, and then we'll get some feedback and we can kind of continue this on through other podcasts, um, to really help people get into that, that, um, habit driven life. Yeah. Yeah. That's the good stuff. Yeah. The blade method way. The blade method way. Speaking of the blade method way, have you seen the new t-shirts? That we're rocking and some new uh, stickers at the gym, car logos, signs starting to say Blade Method. We've had we've had some members ask me. I've heard, I'm sure you've had a lot more ask you about what is the Blade Method. What is? Are we changing? Are we moving? Are we rebranding? What the whole? What is the Blade Method? So I'll let you kind of take the reins on that since you are. The yeah. blade method. <laughs> well, you're part of the blade. Well, I'm method. part of the blade method, yeah, but you can definitely explain it better than I can. Yeah, so um, you know, this is something that recently, again, a lot of our apparel, especially, is come out and said the blade method, and we intro- we kind of revealed a little bit about it at our uh, anniversary, anniversary party. Anniversary party, yeah. Um, that CrossFit Blade is CrossFit Blade. We do CrossFit, we love CrossFit, and we don't want to stop being CrossFit Blade. We are still CrossFit Blade. Yeah. But That's CrossFit, never going to change. Yeah. CrossFit Blade and CrossFit Blade North are housed within the Blade Method brand that we're now expanding on. And even if you watch this podcast on YouTube, the slides that 
uh, Fly Across, Blade Method Barbell, Blade Method Nutrition, Blade Method Kids. We do so many other things besides our Blade Method or besides our base CrossFit program that we want to not blanket it as all CrossFit because right. it's not. It's not the same thing. You know, um, our nutrition coaches teach they our nutrition coaches teach daily habits Mm -hmm. um and use that precision nutrition model and and that's housed under blade method our gymnastics coach stacy she's housed under blade method and you Mm -hmm. you're one of our gymnastics coaches hey thanks you got a series coming up here on the 15th december um so you know and so our barbell team our weightlifting team who we're going to national meets all over and now we have a couple of power lifters bobby's starting his powerlifting career and we branch out that barbell or the powerlifting as part of our barbell those all things aren't crossfit yeah you know and so crossfit blade in its own can't ex- can't cover all of the things that we want to do it can't cover blade method mindset right you know and so um the blade method is we do things a certain way and we're super proud of the way we do things and so in order to put that on display and to get our band out brand out there uh to the world is to brand it a certain way as and we figured out and this is me tara and claire really brainstorming on how we wanted to brand it and the blade method just came out you know that it's we're blade we got bladies we got bladeettes we got blabies like rusty blades uh, rusty blades we all yeah. when we we are blades you know what a blaby is a, a blade method baby yep that's good yeah and, and so rusty blade for those of you who don't know is as a, a, a older a master's a master's athlete. is a rusty blade <laughs> hit, hit up nancy vanacore Nan- you want a t-shirt <laughs> she'll get you a shirt <laughs> um oh, 35 and over yeah uh and so you know um to to just put it all under crossfit wouldn't be fair to everything that we do and it wouldn't be fair to crossfit because it would be misrepresenting what crossfit is yeah. and so our base program is crossfit crossfit blade is awesome we love crossfit blade we love crossfit blade north but we do a lot of other things and we want to grow all those other things and affect people in so many different ways that it can't just be down to that inside of what crossfit is yeah exactly and then and there's, there's the other self of re of separating ourselves from other Everybody CrossFit else. gyms. Yeah, exactly. Because we're not the same as other CrossFit gyms. We don't feel the, the same as other CrossFit gyms. And, and we want to do things, you know, um, you know a step above, I guess. Yes. We really yeah, want to... I, mean, I don't think that's saying anything wrong. Yeah. And again, I, I don't want to speak down on anything, but if there's five CrossFit gyms within a couple miles of my CrossFit gym... Mm-hmm. How are people that just Google CrossFit going to know the difference? difference, Exactly. But if they know the blade method and they know what we do, then maybe they can make a more informed decision on, because we're not, we are a little bit more expensive than the other gyms and we, you know, are a little bit bigger and do more things. Things differently, yeah. But if you just hear CrossFit and don't realize that we're not a franchise, that we're all independently owned and operated, we all put together our own programs and do what we want to do within our walls then you think it's just the same like, yeah it's, it's just, just the same just, like if you're going to that one's two minutes closer I'll mcdonald's that. yeah you exactly. know which it's not crossfit we are affiliates of crossfit we're not franchises of crossfit you know and so it's not the same experience within every single gym yeah and i think if i think anyone that's listening that knows you or claire or tara or any of the coaches we never step away from crossfit or from what that's done. like crossfit blade will always be CrossFit. We'll always, you know, that's what brought it all together in the first place. It's just expanding upon it. Exactly. You know? So it's not that we're leaving CrossFit and all of a sudden, slowly but surely, you're going to see a bunch of machines lined up in the gym. Yeah. And it's going to change into a Globo gym. Like it's just us expanding on the brand. Exactly. I think the easiest way to say is CrossFit Blade is housed within the Blade Method. Yeah. And we're not going to stop doing CrossFit Blade gear. And stuff like that. Like a lot of people love having CrossFit on their gear. I love like having CrossFit blade on gear and we're going to continue to do that. We got a hoodie coming out in January. That's going to be a CrossFit blade hoodie. Um, We just got CrossFit blade North shirts. Yeah. Finally. And blade North. Yeah. A lot of people. Yeah. yeah. And so, but you know, so we have these shirts on that say blade method fitness 
Blade Method Fitness, baby. That's an awesome. I love these shirts. Yeah, you know, um, and I'm super proud to wear it. I'm I'm as proud to wear a Blade Method shirt as I am to wear a CrossFit Blade shirt. And I and I can't wait till I have Blade Method mindset shirts and and gymnastic shirts and and just to continue to represent our brand that we're working really really hard to. Uh, to not perfect, but we're working really, really hard to make it something that people grow and expand, love and, and value continue, yeah. and are loyal to and appreciate and are proud to represent. I want people to be proud to represent um, a Blade Method shirt or a CrossFit Blade shirt. And people see that and they're like, man, yeah, they did it right or, or they're doing it right. Right. You know, so and there, we make mistakes. We don't do everything perfect. I've made tons of mistakes in over the years and um i don't do everything correctly and i'll do one thing one way and then realize it wasn't the right way to do and try to do it better or do something really well that i thought is really good and then other people thought it was really good and we try to make that even better you know so it's the blade method way is always being humble yeah <laughs> <laughs> And being able to realize that, hey, you, you're, not, you're not the end all be all. Like, you need to take cr- criticism and critique and look at yourself and reevaluate and make adjustments and become better. So th- sometimes that's hard to do. It, it's not harder as I grow and get older. Like, I, I used to kind of have a it's my way or the highway type of attitude, mm-hmm. um, you know, in my, in my later twenties and, and not really really listen to anyone, what anyone had to say, because I was like, well, it's my way, you know, I'm doing this, um, which is just a total wrong attitude to have. And so thankfully I have Claire and Tara, they can really help me with that. And in, you know, really bring me back to yeah. reality and real life and making better decisions which is good so. that's you always need that so i mean what can members expect to change if anything i mean what nothing nothing right besides yeah. having more awesome gear yeah a shirt that says something different on yeah. it and you know more people you know like hopefully expanding the weightlifting program exactly people- okay so not nothing to change so with our crossfit program yeah, nothing, nothing to change. change i think people know that since our last anniversary party and coming to class nothing has changed you still have coaches you still have the program that's there for you but what can change is just making always constantly striving to make more things available to our people and to bring people that aren't currently a part of blade into one of those situations whether it's helping them with nutrition weightlifting powerlifting uh mindset whatever it is we want to provide (laughs) an outlet for them to become a better version of themselves yeah and it seems like we've i mean i don't know the exact numbers but we've definitely obviously bobby's new to the uh, powerlifting program is joining in with Mikey and and Olympic lifting. We have what I feel like since the anniversary party. At Our least Olympic four weight, like weightlifting grow, team yeah. is definitely growing, and we're, we we got to meet in February, and we have a huge participation in that. And we're really excited about that. The, that's the uh, the Blade Barbell Open Phoenix Open, um, which we're super excited about, and uh, that's a program that. We were, we didn't want to go too hard too fast with it. We've really organically grown it, and it's something I think that you and I are both passionate about the youth aspect of that yeah. and growing that. And I'm excited to have you on as that because I've only got so much time to devote to that. And as bad as I love coaching youth weightlifters, it takes a lot of time. Yeah. And in order to do everything else that we want to do, I can't just coach youth weightlifters all the time. And so, um, you know, I, I we've got to find a team and. A a team that is capable and willing to support all of these programs and that's what we're doing yeah it's awesome it's definitely growing there's more and more lifters over there every time we have a class it seems like which is awesome and a lot of them just raw getting into it just beginning lifters and doing awesome so yeah it'll be fun to see that meet and how many people are there yeah. claire, claire won't let me lift in it but did you try to lift I asked. I asked her if I could. No, lift you it. didn't. Yes, I did. Just I said, sign up. I said, Claire, can I do the weightlifting meet? And she very politely goes, Oh yeah, as long as you wear lifters. <laughs> <laughs> so she would let you do it. Yeah, she'll let me do it if I don't wear uh, nanos. Dude, you can wear nanos. <laughs> I know. We, Everyone's I, gonna make fun of you, but you can do it. I know, right? No, I don't know if I'd ever do that. That's a lot. I don't. That's a lot. See, of I knew you wouldn't do it. See, that's where the truth comes out, people. If, is if you guys didn't care, if Claire really, Claire really doesn't want me to wear nanos, though. She doesn't care. She just wants you out there. 
Oh, then I'm signing up. I'll do it. You want to do it? Are you doing that one or no? Dude, no, I'm running it. But I'm. Oh, I, good. Give me all the. I'm likes. announcing. Are you running? Who's judging? TBD. Oh man. Yeah, I gotta. T- I gotta sweet talk the judges. Hopefully. I- all right. So people, this is something that you're gonna have to help me out with: is calling Corey out on whether or not he's actually gonna do the weightlifting meter if he's all top. <laughs> That's uh, you know, I think that people would like to see out there yeah you know do, if you guys have never seen Corey set up on him for a heavy lift you might think <laughs> he, you might be fooled six or seven times that he's actually going to take the lift you never know when it's going yeah. to happen his uh butt pump is second to none <laughs> and then his jerk uh, That's getting the perfect. Every time I jerk, Claire goes, "Oh, you could never tell if that was an attempt or not." Yeah. I don't think that would have counted. We'll have to alert the judges. <laughs> yeah, I was gonna tell the judges, like, "I'll tell you when I'm gonna lift. I'll say it out loud. Yeah. This is the one." Corey's got some unorthodox, unor- <laughs> unorthodox uh, setups, Lifting but techniques. I'd love to see it out on the stage. We'll make that happen. Yeah, we'll make it happen. It'll be all right. Yeah. Well, good. So that's what you guys can expect to change. Absolutely nothing except for awesome stuff that you get to grow. And, Keep coming. Yeah, have more people come into the gym in different avenues and different programs. But like last night when, you know, and again, this is for our community, but at 5.30 p.m. when there's, there was, the platforms were full. Oh, the yeah. comp area was, you know, the personal training comp area people were working out in. People were working out on the turf. We had 24 people in the 5.30 class. Like, it was just an amazing yeah, it was awesome. functional fitness environment. Yeah, like just throwing down. Yeah, I mean eighty people in there not eighty, but probably sixty people in there in the gym just some of them were just sitting in circles talking, working out, lifting, comping, like awesome, awesome throwing environment. Down. And if we only did CrossFit, then that wouldn't you couldn't do it. It wouldn't be it wouldn't be that environment. We wouldn't have so many different people doing so many different things. And you would so. have to turn the people away who would want to do those specialty avenues, right? Like if you have someone that I want I want to do weightlifting, like I like CrossFit, but I would really like to pursue weightlifting. If all we had was CrossFit and we said, oh well, yeah, we can teach you how to lift kind of like over here in this little corner Mm -hmm. like you can't really teach anybody that way like they're still just going to do crossfit so being able to have that area and the avenue to support it and having a coach over there with them teaching them like that's what sets us apart i believe from everybody else absolutely so um i did will say i guess here the one thing that has changed i guess would be programming going from you know the past programming for what, four years? Five years. Five years. Being more of a strength, strength bias, bias yeah. gym. Um, to recently, what, just after, kind of just after the anniversary party, right? We kind of rolled out the new program Yeah, this just came to like, uh, again, kind of the, the life pondering mission of how do I continue to make people better through CrossFit? And... What I found was, and this is through a lot of kind of someone that I really look up to in the field of Ben Bergeron. I appreciate a lot of the stuff that he does. Um, Listen to some of the stuff that he had to say about it. But um, going from a strength bias, meaning we had strength training and then we did the Metcon. Yeah. And that would happen Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday for five years. And then Thursday would be an active recovery cardio day and then Friday fun partner workout. And my quest is... As we went from a five-year gym where a lot of CrossFit gyms disappear, yeah. I want to surge. And I want to keep members and turn them into our five-year members that get rewarded into 10-year members, into 15-year members, and keep this train rolling. And so what I found was that in order to do that, I got to keep people healthy. Yeah. And coming in and strength training, however fun it is, it is so fun. We love it. Yeah. Our members love it. Lifting, and it works. And like, it works. That's the hard, like, it, Periodized strength training it, works. It's beneficial. You will get stronger. Yeah. And but we have a broad group of people. Exactly. And not all of our people need or will benefit from lifting 85%, 90% and above constantly. Right. So we took the approach of backing off the periodized strength training and bringing more of a longevity approach in strength training still we still train strength train but now it's 
once a week or once every 10 days um, as opposed to three times a week. Right. And so what that's done, and I've, I'm constantly collecting data on it, is hopefully allow us to coach more, which mm-hmm. it has, which we've been super proactive about. Allow us to do better warm ups, which it has, right. um, and then also allowed us to focus really on that more in cardio endurance and strength piece as opposed to like the shorter time domain and really let me allow me to program like further harder core intervals to tap into all energy systems and so we're bringing that longevity piece in, which is what people need is to get healthy and I believe the program that we've introduced and we've been doing for the past several months is allowing people to not only get better body composition, but stay healthier, keeping their joints healthier and, um, get fitter. I I truly believe our members are getting fitter and I had the data to prove it. And at the same time, getting stronger, still PRing on all their lifts without specifically training their lifts. And guess what? That's the CrossFit methodology. That's what CrossFit.com does. CrossFit.com does not do periodized strength training, but people that follow just CrossFit.com get stronger at just doing CrossFit. And we're getting stronger. Oh, yeah. You're getting stronger. I'm getting stronger. We do a little bit of supplemental programming, but our comp training has gone way down compared to what it was since as all these changes the period, oh, and, yeah, like, and the volume. And a lot where, you know, way less training than we used to do, yeah. and we're still getting stronger. Yeah, definitely. You know, and so I have we have members that are PRing their overhead squat, PRing their push press, doing all of these awesome, amazing things with weight, not specifically training for that weight. Yeah. And it's awesome to see. And it's, and I can't, and I love it. And I love the, the metrics that I get to provide and look at. And, and you know, I don't, so I don't like everyone's score on Wattify anymore. Mm-hmm. I used to every night, Felt the obligation to, to like, like everyone's, everyone's score. and if I missed it one time, then people are like, "Why didn't you like my Wattify score or whatever?" <laughs> and so I just had to completely stop, stop that. I look at Wattify in the scores two to three times a day. Mm-hmm. I'm constantly watching what our members are doing and learning and trying to see what they're doing, and I and I to see who's coming in, to see what they're doing, to see how they scaled it seeing you know so many different things just because i'm not liking it means doesn't mean anything that just means in in fact when i felt so obligated to like it i wasn't studying nearly as much as i am right now um but just that obligation of before bed i had to make sure that i liked everybody's score was like it it was overwhelming and so i had to cut that out but now i get to look and look a lot more in depth i've looked at wattify twice this morning on a workout that i wrote and it's a cardio workout yeah it's a 10 mile bike with sit-ups and burpees in it not super technical but i've looked at i was like man how's this gonna play out what are the times gonna be yeah um how are people gonna like it are they gonna enjoy it you know and so um i'm you know constantly looking at that stuff and so you know I'm constantly seeing that we're getting stronger and fitter by not doing the strength training. So Yeah. And it probably, I mean, it gives you a lot more room to play with programming too, obviously, right? You have a 60-minute window that you need to to work through for a class. You have a warm-up that takes, you know, anywhere from 10, you know, 10 minutes or less. You have a whiteboard that takes another 5 to 7 minutes and then you have like so if you add on a strength training piece onto that, even if you keep it in a window that you designate, so a 15 minute window for strength training, like that puts you in pretty much the same time domain for those three days a week that you can't really get out of. Yeah. And now we have a 45 minute window, no matter what that you get to Mm -hmm. program throughout. Mm -hmm. Right. So I think it gives you a lot more variance in your programming as well, as far as time and ability to coach. Yeah, exactly. Which is kind of one of our initiatives that we've rolled out is, how much more we want to coach and get to coach Mm -hmm. pre and post or pre and during the workout, you know, so it allows us to do that. We we had a team meeting on it today and, um, and it's, everyone's enjoying it and it's working and hopefully our members are enjoying it too. I get a lot of positive feedback on it as well, you know? And again, like, a lot of times when I was getting some of the feedback at the beginning, when I first rolled this out, like people that would tell me they, they wanted to bar, you know, mainly it was people that just didn't want to do Metcon, <laughs> you know, like the <laughs> people that do that. don't want to do it the most probably needed need to, the most, yeah, you know, and, I've said that and I times. tell them that to their face, you know, I mean like, Hey, well you need to, so yeah. <laughs> you yeah, know, you why don't you just hold that, work hold that, that thought, yeah. you know, and wait and see the results. 
So yeah, and it's not like you don't get to. Li- I mean, yesterday we got to lift a heavy two rep snatch, but oh, you yeah. had to be able to get through some work to get there. Like yep. it's, you, it I pays love those to be, workouts. It, I do too, because it, it takes me so long to get warmed up as it is. So that just helps. Like your yeah. body feels so good into that fourth, fifth, sixth round. That oh yeah, it's kind of in a, like a that picture perfect window. Most and just of the, the strategy behind it. Yeah, and, yeah. I've, people really like, enjoy those type of workouts on Wednesdays. Yeah, most of the like. For myself personally, like any most of the PRs I've hit in the past, whatever, have been in those type of workouts. Mm-hmm. Like I can't, I, maybe it's just the pressure. I hate because your heart rate's up. up. I hate a one rep max. Like yeah. if it's like determined out there, the only me that well exactly. That's probably why I'm more scared of it than anything is because it's like here is your time that you get to like I want to get through some work and then just have it be maybe I can lift heavy and then it happens. Like it's the pressure of. All right, it's one rep max day. You, it's all today. This is yeah. all you're thinking about. And yeah. then you're kind of cold and you go into it. Nah, I like doing it during a workout. Yeah. Well, so. I hope that people enjoy it. And again, if you guys have more feedback about that, shoot us a message and, and me a message and let me know how you're loving it. If you don't like it, then I'd like to hear that too. And then I'll talk you out of it. <laughs> <laughs> we'll what, tell you why you should like it. Why you should like it. <laughs> yeah, no, I think it's been... From a coaching and from uh, being an athlete at the gym, I, I enjoy it. I think it's been for the better. Yeah. Well, Corey, as we wrap this up, I'd like to hear one thing about you that you're going to make a daily habit to try to improve yourself so we can check uh, back up on that. A new daily habit. Do you have one? Mm-hmm. Oh, dang it. Do you want to say yours first? Nope. <sighs> daily habit, daily habit, daily habit. Um... Can I do one that I need to get back to that I haven't been doing? Okay. Yeah, I'm going to go back to drinking three hydro flasks a day in water. So that's like uh, 60-ish. No, it's like 74 ounces of water. You don't have a 40-ounce hydro flask? I don't think so. Is that, is that what they are? Mm-hmm. Okay, then that whatever that is. Okay. 120 ounces of water. Yeah, that's the bare minimum. Yeah. So that's good. Uh and I used to do it religiously, when is, no matter what. When is one of those going to take place? I'll start it. I don't have my hydro with me today. So I'll start it tomorrow. I'll start bringing it back to the gym. For some reason, I stopped bringing it to the gym, and that's where I think that I drink enough water throughout the day, but I'm probably not. But before, when I had it with me at all times, I would drink three no matter what every single day, and I just I felt like I felt better. So I'm going to get back to doing that. 20 ounces of water. First thing in the morning. First thing in the morning also. I do that because I'll wake up and I'll slam a big glass of water or a bottle of water, but I don't continue well, I remember throughout the day. We had, you had a big excuse about that last time with the funneling being well, too yeah, wide. I mean, I still I drink it. I can't it. slam it as fast as that. But I no. get an entire thing done. I did make a habit of drinking an entire bottle of water or glass of water before I had any thing else okay because i was getting like i would wake up and drink coffee and that'd be like the first thing no so i had to get back to drinking water first and then i drink coffee what's yours what's your new habit i was like i was hoping you were gonna say you're gonna commit to reading about at least a chapter of one book a day i should do that maybe that will be a i should that's a good i'll add that. that's a life-changing habit i'll add that to the water because i need to get back to reading (laughs) don't add the book to the water i've done (laughs) I've done the water thing before, and I know yeah. I can get back to that. That I should do that. I was doing a lot better with that for a while. Like you gave me a couple books, I smashed through them. I, I got another book for you. Okay, then I'll start it. One chapter a day. Because how many books do you go through a week? Not a week. I mean, it just depends on the size of the book. You go through. You read a lot, though. You, you I'm on my 29th book of the year. Of the year. So that's a couple of months, I guess. What's your favorite type of book to read? Oh, I just posted a thing the other day. I had a, I went to Bo- uh, Barnes and Noble and I got a book about adventure about that guy walking across Antarctica, uh-huh. which he was a guy inspired by, by a previous book that I read about the Ernest Shackleton expedition. The endurance is what that book is called, which Angie, Angie Pinscover referred to me, and it was about uh, right during World War One. Uh, England sent these explorers down to Antarctica to try to traverse across, and they got trapped in the floe ice, and they had to hike across and they it was just this tremendous tale of survival i mean if you haven't read the book of the endurance the i've named a few workouts over it. i've i've named workouts ernest shackleton the endurance but just an amazing tale of survival that book he this guy that actually hiked across antarctica was inspired by that tale mm-hmm. so i bought that one and i bought uh a jocko book of extreme ownership or uh 
dichotomy to leadership. I brought a George R. R. Martin thousand page uh, fantasy novel. He's the Game of Thrones author. Author. He wrote this book three hundred years before Game of Thrones took place. And then the one I'm currently reading, that's the one I chose, was uh, Bill O'Reilly history book, Killing the SS. Um, he writes all those killing books, Killing England, Killing Lincoln, Killing Jesus. Um, this one's oh, Killing the SS. Rich which Froning, I think, was talking about that you read. A killing book? Yeah, reading yeah. those. He liked them. They're amazing. I heard um, the this one isn't my, one of my favorites, but it's the one I'm reading right now. Hopefully I'll finish that uh, within the week, and then I'm going to read that leadership book and, and the Antarctic one by the end of the year. I've got a couple parenting books that I'm going to tack onto that. I'm going to try to get up to 30-something books, 35. Four books maybe by the end of the year um, we'll see how that goes but yeah so I believe that reading a chapter a day will help you tremendously and so right. I've got another book coming for you so Sweet. it's coming at Christmas time though so you gotta wait alright I'll wait for it um, and I'll take it down yeah my habit yeah new habit yeah um, so this is something that uh, is a little bit out there but um Sam Dancer posted a thing about doing it the other day and getting out into a barefooted situation every day. And I was thinking about that and I was like, man, I would like to do that. I love being barefoot. <laughs> and so I and now and I've been thinking about this. There's nowhere for me to do this currently. Getting sand or grass, something that's neurologically stimulating to your skin. Um, because I was reading another thing about how Oh, during our uh, one of my parenting books, how important touch is. Uh -huh. You feel that? Is yes. that weird? <laughs> a little bit. But if I was your mom, it would be super comforting. Right. And so, yeah. like, um, just the, the power of the, uh, the way our skin is made to receive touch and how powerful it is, that getting out in the sand and grass barefoot is super powerful for you. Like, if you're doing yoga or something like that out into it. Um, but I have fake grass in the back. So and then all around my neighborhood is concrete concrete and, and then there's a grass patch where i walk the dogs but it's full of pee and poo because <laughs> people walk their dogs it's the in it. yeah it's the only you know and so it's like i'm not gonna go frolic in the <laughs> in the pee and poo and so like i was thinking like maybe i get a sand pit at the gym or grow some grass in a patch over there but that's a habit that i would like to do is stretch it, it barefoot in sand or grass but i just had to find it find some grass yeah, maybe that's a Clara tough one. let me make a sand pit out back and use it as yeah. a baby excuse. That's a good idea too. Well, the only other, I mean, there's there's the, no shot of that happening that, by the way, happening. but yeah, by the Safeway that you guys go to, but that's like you'd have to drive to it. There's by the Pensacola's old house where my dad lives. Mm -hmm. there's oh, there's a, a big huge park out there. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, man, that. You'd have to dude, I have one down in my neighborhood at the community center, um, but it's too busy yeah you know like that one's big enough that you would get lost like you wouldn't yeah you'd no one, yeah exactly the one by the community center there's too many people around too many kids screaming yeah you know and dogs and i thought you were gonna say because i read that post too but he also says something about like jumping up and down on a bosu ball or a yeah, trampoline no. i was like trampoline maybe yeah i mean that would be fun i love fun. the trampoline yeah. I, you know that that's something i really enjoy too so when my daughter is like six we're getting a trampoline yeah and you're gonna get yeah. hurt on it i've been hurt oh yeah yeah it's a couple Mary, times. We, I mean, I don't want to sound like I'm I've like... I've got a two-inch scar on my foot from a trampoline. Oh, yeah. Those were the scariest. I don't want to sound like I'm like, oh, back in my day, but we had trampolines with the, the metal Oh, yeah. Spring. I think they like, still do. I think they have all, like... I've seen a couple that that's like strap. It's like a, a vinyl strap. Oh, I'm like, that, you ain't getting no yeah. bounce out of that thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Those things. And then, of course, remember the... The like padding that would go around it that would last for about four and a half days yeah, and then yeah, that was just yeah, gone. gone. You jump and then land the foot in the spring. <laughs> straight through the spring. That's what happened to me. Oh, I, I got bounced, landed foot in the spring, back bent over, yeah. and so I was supposed to flip off my foot. So I'm back, bent backwards over the trampoline, but my foot is got a spring through it, oh. through my the side of my big toe, and I'm bent back, and it's just slowly ripping oh, my gosh. foot open, and my friend couldn't lift me up, so I was hanging there until it just ripped out of my foot, oh. and uh, I got the scar on my left foot to prove it still. It was awesome. Yeah, we had one growing up, and we would pull it over to the middle of the yard by our pool, jump off the roof, bounce someone off the trampoline into the pool. I got in a lot of trouble for that one. Justin, I almost killed my little brother multiple times on 
the bouncing into the pool, sending them over towards the fence, and we're not helping the pool, the trampoline company, endorsement yeah, right now. I know. Or, or my need to get a trampoline. But yeah, so that's a habit that I really like to do because I've got a lot of other habits like the reading and the I read my Bible every morning and I've, before I get out of bed and do all that stuff. Like I've got a lot of stuff that I've worked on and, and done, but I want to do something that's going to be really um, kind of fill up my, my energy sources more. And I think that that's one of them that I'd like to try out. So well, sweet. Next you're going to read. We, yeah. I'm going to frolic in the sand. So we, this is probably, Grass. I mean, we, I don't think you're going to be frolicking by next week. So we'll make it a point by what? Like episode, episode maybe 12 or 13, 13 or 14. We'll oh. talk about it again. Are you worried about me not frolicking in the sand? Or are you reading a chapter? No, right? I can find a way to read. I don't think you're going to find grass to go frolic in. You don't like people that are not part of your inner circle. So I know you're not going to go to that field with all those people and run around with yeah. people you don't know. I might. <laughs> There's it's not that it's okay. So if they were complete strangers, like if I was in like California or whatever, mm, then true. it would be different. But like they're like they had to they, see you they're in my in community, <laughs> you know. And like, so like I am, the I am the like, guy that walks around with sunglasses, a headband, short shorts, and two pit bulls with my shirt off every day. Also true, you know. Like you don't also want to be that guy that also frolics around. <laughs> <laughs> the grass. Yeah, like, and so that's like that they, weird pit bull frolicking. Yeah, guy. yeah, yeah. <laughs> Like you can only do so much, and Claire will only tolerate so much. So, yeah. Well, we'll have to find a grass patch for you. Awesome. All right, guys, thanks for listening. Again, you can subscribe on iTunes, SoundCloud, watch us on YouTube, subscribe to the CrossFit Blade YouTube page that may or may not be changing to the Blade Method YouTube page. Um, and uh, we'll keep them going. Thanks for listening. See you guys later.